afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Global Ties on an amazing two days of advocacy, of leadership, of citizen diplomacy. Uh, all of you all deserve a round of applause. Please give, give yourselves a round of applause. I'm Stuart Holliday, the president of Meridian International Center, and I'd gladly change my ambassador title for mayor or governor any day of the week. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to say that, first of all, what you're doing in leading your communities uh, is, is quite remarkable. Both of you all have taken the view that to have jobs created, to have people educated, to have innovation, to have good infrastructure, you have to have a global view. But not everybody thinks that way. Uh, and I was wondering if I could maybe start with you, Mayor. Um, when you talk about trade, and you talk about job creation, I think a lot of Americans still have trouble understanding that a, a trade agenda or an international agreement, a free trade agreement, even at the state level, will lead to a job for them. And you're talking about income disparity. What can we do to make a closer connection for your constituents about the benefits of international engagement? Well, I think that there's got to be a mindset first of all, that you either have or you don't have, and that is, are you, are you externally focused or are you internally focused? I think, fortunately, one of the benefits of media that we have is people are realizing how externally we all are connected in some manner. Uh, and I think the more and more we do that, the more people travel internationally. That's why I'm a big believer in, in uh, um, all the, uh, the, the flights that are going all over the place. Just visiting some other place helps. But I'll tell you, we've got to tie it back ultimately to business growth. And the TPP, I think, has been a good example of that um, because we, we were kind of divided. Trans-Pacific. Partnership. Partnership with, uh, with uh, Asia. Th with Asia, because there was a critical moment. The labor uh, groups were against it. There were some folks uh, uh, on the right that were against it as well. I'm of the, uh, the belief that I want to compete for the world. I just don't want to compete in North Dallas, right. because there's a lot more zeros next to the world number. Governor, and so that's that's kind of the, the attitude I'm taking. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I mean, obviously the same attitude, but I will tell you, I mean, two of the things I specifically talked about, which um, Ohio, great. Again, you operating within the confines of the federal laws such as they are with regard to visas, we realized that we had an opportunity, um, not only an opportunity, but there's also a demand on the business side um, to, to attract and keep international students not only during their time of education, but also take advantage of the time they, they can stay on their student visa and work. So we're not talking about uh, HB1 visas. We're not talking about some of the more complicated rules that we all have, obviously may have concerns about. But operating within the confines of the rules that we have, we're hearing from the business community there's a demand, there's a need um, for a certain uh, educated level uh, individual. And we found that by by taking advantage of this opportunity, we You're could. You're talking about the H-1B visa yeah. program? No, the student visa. The student visa student program. Student visa. We're yeah. talking, that's, that's strictly what the Ohio Great Program is targeted at, is the student visa holder, and also connecting that student uh, with employment mm -hmm. uh, with a company located in Ohio, maybe a company from their home country. Um, and we're doing it, one, because there's a demand in Ohio for that type of skill that student has. Um, number two, it's also also a cultural exchange, both at the at institution education institution level, but also within the business. And then number three, for the reason that when that student returns to their home country, uh, they may stay with the company that they mm -hmm. are employed with in Ohio, if if that's a, a potential opportunity, or may, will go back to their own home country um, with an eye towards economic development and opportunity in their mm -hmm. home co community. You know, it's interesting, we're all talking about needing a, an infusion of talent and having that kind of connection to innovation wherever it comes from. You can't just manufacture it in your backyard. Uh, we now have to get it wherever it is. 
And I think that with the 24-hour news cycle of what people see about the world, it's a scary place. Mm -hmm. And when they meet somebody from a country or they live next to somebody, they go to school with them, uh, they meet with them on exchange, it really has a humanizing effect. Don't you agree? No, no question. Uh, that was a leading question. That was, <laughs> no, I mean, it's... You it's, don't have to agree, but I... <laughs> It's, it's, what, uh, it's what puts the human face on this. And there are bad people out there in, in every region and every part. But uh, we've got to realize that we are going to get better as a country if we engage. There's this, there's this, I, there's this move to isolationism that is very dangerous. It's dangerous militarily, economically, on the social issues that we face. And the more we engage, the more we can set the, the, the rules and I think do good things in this world. So um, either way, there's gonna be issues. You might, I always say lead, follow, or get up, out of the way, always try to lead. Yeah, I, I can think of an example. I met with three um, Japanese students who were studying at the University of Finley in Northwest Ohio, um, who were here on an exchange program with a, a, a business that is located in Ohio. Um, and, and you talk about you know, people as people. You mentioned that, I believe, in, in your comments as well, Mayor. Um, it, it does give you the opportunity when those students are here to um, enjoy the things about each other that you have in common. And the one thing those students mentioned to me, which I was surprised by, Japanese students, they spoke English, and, and pretty decent English, as a matter of fact. Um, they loved the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And uh, all three of them were traveling to Cleveland uh, because they love music. And so it, it does allow you to humanize, which is also a great advantage of the cultural exchange with Ohio Great. You get to humanize the person and understand that our cultures, yes, they're different, and yes, there are bad people, but we probably have more in common if you get the opportunity to know that. That's true. Uh, Texas and Ohio are, are, are big states. I mean, if you all were countries, you would be up there and you know, I'm sure rank very highly in terms of GDP in the world. And uh, when you travel around, uh, people are proud of being from Ohio. They're proud of being from Texas. They might even say they're from Ohio first before they say they're from the United States. <laughs> they certainly do that for Texas. We know yeah. that, don't <laughs> we? <they? laughs> but I, I was wondering, you know, you, you, you effectively now have to have your, you have the executive branch, which is governing our foreign affairs and, and supporting programs like this, which are critically important. You have the, the legislative branch at the national level that's trying to make sense of the needs of uh, our competitiveness and not always doing the best job uh, of that, frankly, in terms of getting things done. Although we did, just did get an infrastructure bill through. Uh, we've only got three and a half trillion left to find to get our infrastructure back. But how do you think about your, as a, you're a domestic, leader, but you have to think about international affairs on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to organize yourselves for that. So you're using GREAT and your economic development department. I'm sure you as mayor have an office of international affairs and small business, international small business, which Beth uh, used to run, and other tools. But do you have enough tools to do what you want to do internationally? Are you supported when you go on a trade mission, or do they say you're off uh, on, on a, uh, a junket, or do they see that, that this benefits them, and can you do what you need to do? Uh, it's a struggle. There's no question, because people are wanting their streets, uh, the potholes to be fixed. Snow to be plowed. And, and snow to be plowed, and to make sure that we uh, have enough police officers. Those are the issues, and international is way down the list. But that's what leadership's all about, realizing that if you build the right foundation, the payoff's going to be... Um, not only around the corner in a couple of years, potentially, and we've, we've gotten so many more uh, non-stops in the last three or four years, which yeah. means every time we get one, that's $200 million to the GDP in our area. So that's a real benefit. But more importantly, you're building for the long term. I think as leaders, you have to, you have to be pragmatic about the short-term issues, but you've got to build for the long issues. And can't whine about what's happening in Washington or what's happening at the state level. No whining, just do the job and, and the rest will take care of itself. I, I, 
I take it there was no whining on the Boston College football team. There was uh, no. <laughs> There's no crying in football. No crying in football. Um, I, yes, I mean, you obviously have to, to make the case for whether it's the international relationship, the international travel um, to the citizens, whether it's local or, or state level. Uh, I think what we like to do in Ohio and what I like to do is not focus on the tools you don't have, but focus on the tools you do have and, and make the most of them and look for, um, look for common ground and look for ways to, to proceed because you whine, you use that word the best. I mean, you can sit around all day and whine about what you don't have and what you'd prefer to have or why you want something to be different. Mm -hmm. And I, there's time and place for that and I, I'm sure I do a little bit of a my, on my own. Um, but you do really have to make the best of what you have while advocating for those other things and those changes. But you, I, I don't think as a leader, as you've indicated, Mayor, you can, use, you can use the lack of tools as your excuse for not getting things done. All right, I'm going to have a little fun here. Uh, there's a big time CEO of an international manufacturing company that's thinking about relocating a, a major facility to the United States. It's going to employ a lot of people. I'm going to meet with uh, Dallas, and I'm, going to, I'm thinking about Ohio. What are the top three things that you would tell that CEO, <laughs> and what are the top three things you would tell that CEO about why they should be in Ohio, why they should be in Texas? Well, I would just do two. I will say. Because <laughs> you don't have any income I, tax. I will say, yeah, yeah. We, we got yeah. no income tax. We got all that stuff. But I would say. It's a big deal. Do big you deal. want to make the most money for your shareholders, Okay. If you want to make the most money, you should come to Dallas. Okay, all right. If you don't, go someplace else. So that's first question. <laughs> Second, do you want to have a life in doing it? Okay, because you, life doesn't have to be this hard that way in some of these cities. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's it can be you can it can be easier. Right. Okay. Yeah. Quality of and, life. And and so those are the two things you've got to look at. Now I can kind of flesh those things out. Right. But that's those are the two questions that Got people it. are going to be asking. All right. My next. <laughs> but you, but yeah, you, you you've, had the, you've had the benefit of hearing his pitch. So. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I mean, you did a great job, by the way. Um, I, for, I think Ohio is a great place. I was born and raised in Ohio. Uh, we have Midwest values. We have great natural resources. We have water. Um, and we have a government that understands that they can't stand in the way of business success and that we need to be a partner um, in that success and not an obstacle. Great. I'm putting the plan in both, both places, I think. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so both of you, we all have two children, I think. <laughs> I do. I, say. I do. And I do. And, the, and <laughs> my dog is Riley. Riley, yeah. and, he, and but, Riley but, well, uh, he's a, he, She is a Welsh Terrier. Okay. And I'm sure she immigrated from Wells from a long, long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> it was a, By the way, I, I, I have a question. At, at what age uh, do we become unintelligent? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it we? You know, uh, at some point we 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 uh, we we're still you know. Can't keep up with the new math, but that's okay. Now, I wanted to ask you about, uh, on a personal level, about your kids, thinking about uh, international experiences, broadening their horizons. They're going to be competing, or maybe they already are out in the workforce, uh, in an international environment. What kind of experiences or activities are you or would you encourage them to undertake to get a better global view? Well, for us, international was part of the ethos of our family. Um, we made sure that every other year we took a major trip to a country and immersed ourselves in that country. Were there a couple of Pizza Huts? So. Well, there were, there were and many times when I was at Pizza we, we saw a few of those. Just check it. Um, as well. And then what I realized is they couldn't pick up their socks at home, but somehow they could get on the train from one part of Europe to go party <laughs> to the other part, get back, just put, you know, there's this whole concept of being a helicopter parent that it's a bad thing to kind of rescue. Just put your kid in a city, okay, that they can't speak the language, okay, and somehow they come out so much better. Right. That's good. They really do. That's great. So. <laughs>
I'm going to try that. I, you know what? That's my response. I, now I know what I've been doing wrong all these years, and I'm going to do that. <laughs> you are going to help me fix my kids. I am going to put them in a city where they don't speak the language, and you're right. They figure it out. That's somehow. Yeah. Mogadishu. Mogadishu. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. That's not a bad, bad idea. I remember idea. going to Nairobi, and, 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 and our, we took them out to the park, okay, and there was some, a lot of homeless people there. And in hindsight, I got... I said, I shouldn't have done that. But it just changed their life yeah. to right. see that. Anyway, it is right. true. Um, I can tell you my older son is probably beyond the stage of um, that maybe being a real, he's, he's 24, so he's kind of more, he's older, a little more established in his life. Um, my husband also owns a business, a small business, and so we've been very, very local focused. Um, and and I'd, I'd say that obviously there might have been some missed opportunities if you're talking personally. Um, but my old, my younger son is still in college, and we have always encouraged him to look to the study abroad. Because I would, I, and I, I'm not going to say this about Americans or Ohioans, but I can tell you in my neighborhood and my community, I, I'm not really sure we do enough of of talking about and encouraging international travel with our with our students and then our kids, our kids, and then taking advantage of those opportunities. And I think. Obviously, what you've done personally, what you're doing in your community, and I hope what we're trying to do in Ohio uh, is try to make those opportunities available, not only for the students coming in, but also reinforcing it to our students, uh, what, the, what the opportunity and advantages of, of seeing the world. Before we uh, go to the audience for questions, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, both states have a lot of diaspora communities. You have uh, new Americans, you also have Americans that have had uh, tight-knit communities for a long time and certain, I mean, going back to Eastern Europe and Poland and Ireland yeah. to Vietnam and India. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're trying to assimilate, they're trying to look for jobs, they're trying to provide for their kids, and they need economic support too. So in what ways are you reaching out to those communities to bring them in as part of the solution to the challenges that you face? Well, for me, um, you know, we've got a huge Latino population, um, and it's um, not just Mexico, but it's South America and like, and so politically, they're very involved. Uh, we, our, our airport board has a certain amount of seats. We make sure that uh, uh, to, the, to the detriment of the white representatives, we've got always an Asian representative on that. And, and Asia is a pretty big place, I found out, okay? <laughs> there are a lot of different types of Asians, okay? <laughs> so is, they fight over this that. Is, this is see, true. Okay? This is true. But it's important, I mean, that they're <laughs> engaged in, in that. And then through our schools, right, okay? Right. It's all about, you said we can't manufacture enough of the kids taking those jobs and we need people from other places. And that's true. It's sad that we can't because we've got the numbers. We've just got to do a better job. And, and I think these um, disparate, disparate uh, communities, as yeah, you yeah. said, will help us do that right. because they're just so hungry for education. Well, I don't want to overgeneralize on Ohio, but we were just talking um, with the German ambassador. So you've got Northeast Ohio, which is more that Slovak, old, you know, immigrated a long time ago, Italian population. You've got Cincinnati, which where my Cincinnati folks, uh, German Catholic, um, tends to, to be represent, represented well in the Cincinnati area. Columbus is a newer community, um, more immigration, I suppose, more, more diversity then I think you'll see a lot of places. But one of the things we've done, and I think it's important to do this, is any initiative that we have, we, we, we are very mindful of, of cultural diversity. Um, for our, our minority business-owned community, for example, in making sure that they have their opportunity, the minority businesses have opportunities. And that's not just African-American within our state, but also includes immigrant populations. Make sure they have the opportunity uh, to do business with the state when those opportunities exist. We want to strengthen them there, but then also strengthen them in their own communities to be more successful. Uh, looking at police and community relations, for example, and reaching out um, to minority populations uh, to have a more inclusive approach uh, just by listening, listening and being heard in, in the policies and procedures that you establish to address any particular issue, mm -hmm. um, whether, I mean, it could be any number of issues that you face. Great. Well, why don't we open it up? Uh, we have about 15 minutes for, uh, for questions from the audience, and if you just uh, identify yourself and I think we have some microphones. Do we have microphones? Yes. Uh, one right here and one right here.
Thank you. This has been phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, my name is Girish. I'm with Global Ties uh, Arizona. Um, I'm, you know, happy to hear a few subjects that you guys talked about today. Uh, you did mention buzzwords for me, which immigration is a buzzword and business development is a buzzword, and I know that's a large part of exchange. Um, I'd like your thoughts on the EB-5 program and how your communities utilize the investment to immigrate visa program and what more that this audience can do to participate uh, to utilize that program more effectively because it's a tool for international exchange. So just to clarify, this is the program that provides for a faster immigration path for somebody who's going to generate economic impact and create jobs in a, in a state or a city, right? Yeah, you yeah. get a uh, visa, um, one visa for every half million dollars right. of uh, investment. Akin to the Canadian system, yeah. It's been uh, a, a huge help uh, to Dallas. We've had hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in the ground going vertical because of that. Uh, to me, it doesn't happen by staying put, though. You have to, you have to go out and tell the story, um, and you've got to have good partners. We've got a good partner in Dallas that's not at the city level. It's, uh, it's, a, it's really a private-public partnership, uh, and those private industries, they, and by the way, they need to invest in good businesses, okay? They can't, because the word will get out to these investors that they just, they just bought a visa for half a million dollars and that's it. That's all they got. They got to get a good return and then you've got to play offense with it. Probably got to keep a close eye oh, on, no the, question. on the follow-up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so to use the football. Please, all right. Yeah. I'm going to punt because yeah. I don't have an answer to your question. <laughs> That's right. And one thing I have learned is if, if you don't have the answer, don't make it up. I know Lauren's trying to, to give me some information yeah. sitting there, and I, I'm i going to rely on Lauren at some point to I answer that you, question for this gentleman. I bet you this gentleman can follow up yes. Lauren to get the answer to that question. Yes. Uh, so that's how you punt. Right. I did not play football at Boston que College. Question. Question. <laughs> question um, <laughs> do I have a question over here? I'll... Uh, Somebody in the back? Yes. Any of the ambassadors that are here, thank you, by the way, very much for your time. I know how busy everybody is. Oh, she's leaving. She's getting her car. Right. <laughs> Frank Lennox, Meridian International Center. Oh. St Stuart, you mentioned something really interesting, namely innovation and international exchange. Talk more about that. Well, I think the old model used to be come here to America and we'll show you how we do it. And that's the transaction. Mm -hmm. And I think if you talk to industry uh, or even policymakers that are looking for solutions to things, it's, it's come and let's talk about how you're dealing and tackling with that issue where you are. Mm -hmm. So if you're from the Netherlands and you're dealing with water <coughs> reclaiming land from encroaching water and I'm Boston and I got the same problem. The innovation is to create a context where there's a shared, uh, a way to share that information and share best practice. I think that's what I'm talking about. The other piece is I know the State Department uh, obviously is well represented here, is technology. Uh, you know, you have uh, some, you know, we have a budget for exchanges, which of course we always hope will be uh, increased. But y you have millions of people playing collaborative video games. You know, my, I come home and my son is playing a, a game with somebody in Korea. And that's happening. And so the question is, what is it, what's the implication of that for, instead of just, you know, playing shoot 'em up or Space Invaders, what's the implication of that to create, that's an old video game, I realize. <laughs> I've, just, I've just dated <laughs> myself. Yeah. I've just dated myself. Uh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> World of Warcraft. Yeah. No. Uh, the the no is how do we use this technology in in an, in an, in an exchange setting? And I think what we're wrestling with is um, how can people find each other that need the same kinds of, of information that needs the uh, same kind of uh, of opportunities. You know, to me, the answer to that <coughs> question and well said, because I agree with all that, is happening in business. Government trails business 
usually by a decade, okay? You know, even sometimes more, all right? But if you were part of a multinational company in any way, shape, or form, they understood this best practice sharing, that it wasn't just the idea came from our center and spread out throughout the whole world. The ideas flowed right. this way. So the question is, how are global companies, I've been out of the multinational business for a few years, but how are they dealing with technology and how can we in the diplomatic world emulate that? I, I think I have maybe two examples, um, kind of specific, but I've participated the last few years in the uh, Great Lakes Governors and Premier's Conference. We just changed the name of it. Um, because obviously we have Lake Erie and it's the Great Lakes and recently um, Lake Erie we've had harmful algal blooms that has impacted the drinking water uh, in some of our communities in Ohio. So we just entered into an agreement with um, Quebec and Michigan and Ohio and hopefully we'll get other Great Lake states to participate with us um, to share best practices with regard to how do we keep the lake clean. First we recognize the Great Lakes are our, our mutual responsibility, um, but we also recognize that uh, different of us have different levels of expertise in order to um, address those issues. And, and the expertise may come from those within government in research universities or institutions or from the private sector. I guess the second example I would give is as it relates to infrastructure, which infrastructure not only includes roads and bridges and highways, it includes um, your septic, your, your sewer septic, uh, and, the, and the issues, aging infrastructure issues we have in communities across the state of Ohio. Um, and talking to the private sector and learning how they are using different approaches, and I'll just go back to Canada because I was recently, uh, I was recently in Canada, and how they're dealing with, not only in Canada, this particular company in Canada, but across Europe, across Europe how they're dealing with funding those infrastructure issues. You mentioned the, the highway bill. Um, I think that one of the responsibilities I feel like we have as leaders is to find alternative solutions and, and again, not sit around and wait for what the gov federal government may or may not do, but are there alternative ways to, to fund the needs and fix the, fix the problems or come up with solutions in your own communities? You know, and I would say that, that international markets are much more progressive on that Absolutely. than Americans. Absolutely. They don't want the private sector to touch anything Agreed. in the in government. And, and I don't know, that's just an ethos we have, but somehow the rest of the world has kind of figured that out. Yeah. Right. And we, yep. we've got definitely to definitely need more public private partnerships. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I know uh, we're working on, on that. And um, yes, ma'am, I think, uh, can we get a, a microphone up here? By the way, I just want to make a comment while we're wait, waiting for the question. You mentioned the America turning inward. Uh, the last time, few times we've done that, it hasn't worked out so no, well. I know. Before World War One, before World War Two, and pre 9/11, that's the end of history. Let's kind of pull it up. We're going to have our, you know, our own program. The people in this room kept alive the notion that that <clears throat> international engagement is not a, a convenient yeah. fad but it's something that every day needs to be invested in and preserved and cherished. And uh, that's, that's, again, one of the wonderful things that they're able to do. Yes. Thank you for your, all your comments. I'm Nancy Overholt from the Institute of International Education. And just to um, echo what your thoughts were on the importance of the engagement internationally, I'd like to encourage the Lieutenant Governor to know that IIE's, uh, one of IIE's um, engagements is the generation study abroad. 17 universities in Ohio have signed on to double the number of study abroad uh, students that are going out since we need both sides of the uh, engagement, both Absolutely. students coming in as well as students going out. I want to encourage you, but also to say that I'm from Michigan and there are only 14 universities there. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is one time when Ohio's got Michigan beat. <laughs> Maybe she's the getting, last football she's getting, game. She's getting some good work done here. Uh, I think we have time for two more questions. Let's uh, go up here and then we'll go. Um, Somebody over here. Yeah, or two or three more questions. Thank you. My name is Vivian Palmer. I'm with the World Affairs Council of Las Vegas, but I am a proud graduate of the University of Dallas in Irving, Texas. Um, my question to both of you is how do you leverage and utilize your sister city relationships? Well, for me, it has been a 
major strategic decision that nobody cares that we're separate cities. People come into this airport and they can call it whatever they want, but they come to this city called DFW. As I said, it's, this, it's the fourth largest city. It's like being in Jersey, but you're really in New York. I mean, you know, it's, I, I know that is going to inf insult somebody, but that's, <laughs> but that's what happens. Now, a lot of people in Dallas say, no, Fort Worth, got we got to compete with them, people in Fort Worth. We just act, need to act as one as we talk to the world and tell our story. So to me, it's a, it's a mindset. But what cities, what, what are your sister city related? Oh, my, I'm sorry. I, I consider, there I go, I consider Fort Worth a sister city. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did. We're talking about. I know, I know, I know, right? I know, I know, I know, I know. Look okay. a little further. Yeah, little no, further. I got it, I got it. Uh, and, and not as well as we need to. We've got several, uh, many sister cities. Uh, we, our sister city was Sendai in Japan when they had the, the terrible uh, uh, tragedy there with the, the tsunami. And we, we support one another. I get calls and letters, but we're not really strategically doing it as well as we should. So thank you for calling me out have, on that. Have you appointed okay. an ambassador? Have you appointed an ambassador to Fort Worth yet? No, no, no. No. Okay. no, but some people want to be ambassador to Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think I, the way I would respond to that is um, I think our local cities and communities uh, probably do a good job of that, maybe better than from a statewide perspective, um, at least previously. But with through Jobs Ohio, we have, uh, again, we've taken a partnership approach that state, uh, Jobs Ohio is a state nonprofit that's responsible for economic development in Ohio. And they have established regions across the state of Ohio working with local economic de development officials um, in regions across the state. And so through Jobs Ohio, we are doing a better job of understanding all relationships, including sister city relationships, and from a state level perspective, looking for where our opportunities are there. Although I think previously our local communities have probably done a pretty good job, or you know, a good job. Um, by themselves of it. Uh, last question here. Yes. Uh, I'm Ambassador for Lithuania, and um, if I could just surprise you, I don't have a question, but have some comments, and it's a pleasure to listen to you both. But my special thanks are going to Ohio, yeah. Governor Mary, and because I'm a graduate, I'm a product of Ohio State. And, uh, uh, once, once, Baha'i fan, fan, once Baha'i fan, you are a Baha'i fan forever. So it's very, of course, myself, I was a master's degree student uh, back 20 years ago at Ohio, and I'm very pleased to hear that you are open as ever, you know, in Ohio State, and you're welcoming international students. I was an international student there. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank it you. was a pleasure to listen to both of you. Thank you. So, thank you again. I think we'll have a couple of closing remarks, and I'd like to really thank the, uh, the panelists thank for you. your thank, time. Thank, thank you. you.